Hey guys, so let's talk a little bit about Tolarian Community College and the true nature of the beast. Now I will for one say that this is a cycle and the cycle benefits everyone. So something will come out, Weds and Tolarian will play victims, they will get more donations because people donate to victims. People don't, do not donate to someone who's strong. No one donates to Elon Musk. They invest in his stock. They take equity in his companies, but no one donates to Elon Musk or Steve Jobs. But they do donate to people who have been afflicted by disease. Uh, they maybe had their basement flooded. Maybe they lost their jobs. Perhaps they did not listen to their doctors and were was injured severely injured, life-threateningly injured. But this is the core. Let me read you this. Oh, hello, Twitter person with no avatar, zero followers, following five people, and seven total tweets. Think about that for a moment. Isn't that the majority of you guys? Isn't that the majority of his subscribers? Why would this offend him? I learned very early on that the majority of your fan base will have profiles like this. And instead of giving a point out, he goes ahead and attacks them. The fact that they don't have a large following. And here, that there you go. The ifs, the haves and the have nots. A tale as old as time. This is very simple. It comes down to Tolarian thinks he's better than you because he has followers. Otherwise, why drag out this? Why mention when someone doesn't? Why even check that? Is that important to you? And the answer is yes, it's important to him. So it's fascinating, right? Who the pillars of the community are. Are they very successful individuals? Have they done great things outside of magic. Magic is probably very unique as a e-celebrity realm. Um, when you look at people who give panels on how to stream, this is well documented. The panel is basically people on breaks and you look at the cycle. I'll explain exactly how this cycle works and how Tolarian and in a second video Wedge benefit from the cycle. So there is Outrage. Outrage is normally, this time I did it, but they didn't blame me for some reason. And it's probably because my channel is not big enough for them to blame. They would rather blame on Sleep Media, although, as been pointed out, his video came out two hours after mine. And I did tag him on my Twitter to watch my video before. So why not? Why attack on sleeve media? Why go? Why not go after me, the first person to make the video? And the answer is very simple. It's more chic or chick, chic. Well, chic, huh? More chic to go after on sleeve media because then you can rally up all your troops, get some attention, get some more donations, and then repeat. So you guys think that Tolarian Wedge is beyond this? No. I'm going to show you tweet after tweet after tweet. Wedge in particular pokes Jeremy over the GameFinder app. Now, I promoted the GameFinder app two times, and I don't see why we had to go destroy it. Like, I wasn't going to keep promoting it, but I also wasn't going to speak poorly of it. And if you want to know what exactly happened, you can listen to audio on my channel about Wedge plotting against HQ in private. So here you have a cycle. Uh, people don't understand that Wedge and Tolarian, they provoke the cycle. They do things that I'm almost certain they know they're going to eventually be called out on. I'm certain that they knew that they would be called out on this. And what happens is they don't need money from people who dislike them. First rule of business, if a person doesn't dislike, if a person dislikes you, they are never going to hire you. That's not your core demographic anyway, so ignore them. They need money from people who have already donated money to them. 
So just like a political campaign, think about how a political campaign Donald Trump or Hillary works. Lots of rhetoric. Hey, we need to fight against this evil on sleeve media. If they had gone against me, they would not have raised as much money. Simple fact. That's why they focus our, all their ire on unsleeved media because logically it's the thing that will give them the most money. So donations have been going up. Uh, that is a fact. When you can raise $75,000 in the blink of an eye, that's pretty good. And the core argument that is being made on that side, I will go back to the logics of it in a, a different video. I'll break down exactly argument per argument. Um, the core argument is that Wedge is not claiming to be a victim, that his family is the one who did a GoFundMe, and then his wife is the one who posted. But he's always retweeting. He's always saying, oh, so-and-so, uh, Elyon from Stream is doing a 12-hour giveaway. from." So you're promoting people to donate to you. And that's the main objective right now because if I owed $150,000, $200,000 in, I would want to get every single cent from my subscribers. Especially if I didn't have any other income, let's say a nine to five job. So uh, I do want to point out that it just seems so strange to me that these are our role models. These are the Magic the Gathering role models. Because when I think of a role model, I think of someone A, who can take care of themselves, and B, who can give to the community and do good. Um, you can... I watched this guy. His name is Dave Ramsey. And he's pretty, pretty uh, well known on YouTube. You can't do good if you're poor. It's very hard to do that. There's a reason when an airplane is having a malfunction, you have to put the oxygen mask on yourself first, then help. Even if there's a child or a woman or you know whoever, like you want to help an elderly, another physically fit male, it doesn't really matter. You got to put that air mask on yourself first, and then you can help other people because it's a disservice. It is a disservice to not help yourself. Uh, we interviewed, Isabella and I interviewed a guy and he was, he wanted to take a social media position. We had him here for like two hours at the office in downtown and he wanted to open soup kitchen. He spent all his time talking about opening a soup kitchen, but he was incredibly unwealthy. And I said, you know, you gotta, he also had an agency. He wanted to work for my agency. We couldn't hire him because he just didn't have any skills that we needed. And I said, hey, I'm going to help you. So for two hours, I planned on, I took him to how I do sales. I told Norman and Jess to come over here. I think we had Amy at the time. We made him a, a pitch and he just didn't listen because it just don't listen. They just don't listen. Like, um, do you believe Wedge has health insurance right now? Like, I will ask you a serious question. And even if he does, I guarantee you most of you don't believe he does. And that's the problem. That's a problem. Either way, it's a problem. But if someone receives $75,000 from medical bills donated, would the first action be to maybe get health insurance? What do you think the first action was? Wedge's first action, I think, was to get married. Um... You know, I'm, I live in Texas, and Texas, well, I went to NYU, which is very liberal, and then I went to William & Mary for law school, which was kind of conservative, but it is a college campus. Then I lived in Texas, which is very conservative, and, you know, like, it's insane to me. You know, there's so many people here who make less than $30,000, especially where I live, Hopefully you watched the previous video. They make so little money and yet they survive. They have medical problems. They still go to work. Wedge has never worked a day in his life. He has IBS. He said that many times. IBS prevents him from getting a regular job. 
There's no shame in working as a pizza delivery person. There's no shame in working at Walmart. You now I guarantee you need a plan so you can better your, your life. Just like I tell all my entry level employees, you know, in six months I want you to move from your parents' home if you want to, of course. And you know, I want you to save money. I want you to make money. I'm going to give you a raise in six months to help you transition to your own home. The same with you know, if you have student loans, people make fun of uh, one of my friends, and she was a pizza delivery person. She paid off her loans. What's there to make fun of? She worked 80, 90 hours a week, 40 hours delivering pizza and 50 hours, 10 overtime in her job. What's the problem? I hate laziness. I hate when people do something and they expect to be bailed out time and time again. Because you know who's actually doing the bailout? It's the hardworking people. It's the middle class that bails out, bails out. You know the upper class doesn't pay taxes. So who pays who pays Wedge's medical fees when he if he just if and when he declares bankruptcy? It's the middle class. The wealthy don't pay taxes. So the poor cannot afford to pay taxes to get tax refunds. Yeah. You don't think that affects you? News last. Reality is a wonderful being. It'll wake you up real fast. Bye, guys.